Hello and a warm welcome to Business Spotlight. I'm Kukule Tukele. Our topic for today is load limiting. Now we've all experienced load shedding over the past few months in South Africa. For the ordinary consumer, load shedding is an inconvenience to say the least. But for business and industry, load shedding has had a real impact on the company's bottom line. Load limiting has since been put in place to reduce the impact of load shedding on households and small businesses. After some weeks of practical load limiting in certain areas in Johannesburg, let's see how it has worked. With me in studio, I'm joined by the uh, executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Mr. Pax Dao, as well as the managing director of City Power, Sitelo Zkulu. Thank you so much for joining us today, gentlemen. Good to have you with us. Uh, perhaps let's uh, get the overview from the uh, executive mayor, just with regard to load limiting and how this plays a role when it comes to making the city of Johannesburg a world-class leading city. City. Thank you very much, Koko. I, th I think that it might be appropriate to start with an overall context because early last year we gave City Power a mandate to reposition itself from an energy distribution company, or rather an electricity distribution company, into an energy company, taking into account the energy complex in the country, the reality th that we're transitioning into alternative energies, the reality that we're facing pressure on the supply side. So we said to them, look, go and uh, work out how you reposition yourself as an energy company um, for the city of Johannesburg. Whilst we were busy working on the business case of an energy company, it became apparent that we needed to introduce interim measures to mitigate the, imp the impact of load shedding on the residents of Johannesburg, but also on business in Johannesburg. And thus looked at uh, interventions from both a supply point of view and a demand point of view. Some of the supply issues relate to generating electricity from our landfill sites, generating electricity from our wastewater works, looking at uh, alternative energy sources, uh, but also on the demand side, how to introduce demand side measures. Mm. And we identified the rollout of smart meters as a platform from which we, can, we could introduce interventions. And since then, I, th I think that City Power has worked on a comprehensive implementation program. We launched it in about April, and we've been rolling out its implementation. And we're quite excited about uh, the role it's playing in mitigating the impact of load shedding on the city of Joburg. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where the element is, right? Uh, uh, Mr. Kulu, if we come to you, just to get a further explanation of load limiting. As the executive mayor says, he spoke, and clearly you've yeah, listened. No, I think the, the executive mayor is putting it lightly. He actually personally came to City Power. He met with the board, met with the executive committee, mm. just after the, the load shedding. And he said that he cannot allow the city of Johannesburg uh, to go without lights. And I think that's where it all started. So there's really a bouquet of solutions that we've come up with, obviously, under his leadership. Uh, there's Calvin Power Station. Uh, there's ripple controls, for instance. And then there's load limiting, demand response, etc. But just to pick on the load limiting, for instance, uh, as part of the rollout of smart meters, currently we've done about uh, over 92,000 of the smart meters obviously we're counting up and we're using this smart meter to be able to enable the load limiting and basically what it means is that uh, we're in a position now to move away from load shedding to load limiting mm -hmm. meaning that instead of cutting you as a customer off completely of the grid we're able to be able to uh, get you to have power within the house during the load shedding uh, period but I understand that there's uh, strict warnings that actually come into play here. The smart meter actually alerts you to the fact that, look, you are over-consuming electricity for the moment, uh, switch off some heavy-duty appliances, and the, basically the onus is on the resident or the citizen to actually take action and uh, uh, actively participate in reducing the energy consumption, correct? No, certainly, I think that's, that's the idea. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, messages coming on your screen on TV to say reduce load, but very few people really act on that because you think someone else is going to be able to do it. The solution that we basically bring in terms of the load limiting is that you, you will basically interact with your meter. Firstly, you know, 30 minutes before we enter into a load limiting uh, stage, we'll send you an SMS on your phone to say that in the next 30 minutes, uh, obviously depending on the ESCOM instruction, uh, we are going to be embarking on the load limiting. So at least 30 minutes prior to us interrupting your supply, you'll get that particular message on your phone. So when we get into now the 30 minutes, uh, what will then happen? Uh, the meter will basically send a signal to a meter that says that please limit your load to this particular threshold. If you are within that threshold, you won't even probably, you know, feel it. You will continue your, your life, uh, you know, at home and your lives won't be affected. However, Is this the threshold within 21 uh, amps? 
what we've looked at, I mean, in terms of the 21 M's, that's where we started with the large scale rollout. We realized that on average, uh, during peaks, the customers are consuming about 42 amps, uh, roughly. So we then thought that let's then reduce by 50%, which is then 21 amps. And that's where the 21 amps comes from. Um, and by basically doing that, we'll send the threshold and say reduce you know, uh, consumption by 21 amps. And then what we'll then do, the meter will then prompt you. Um, and how it will basically do that, it will, the lights will go off uh, after receiving an SMS, uh, also after receiving a message on your customer interface unit at home, uh, the lights will then go off. Uh, we started with uh, uh, basically 30 seconds. Now we've increased that to three minutes. Mm. So it will go off, it will stay for three minutes off, so that we can allow you time to be able to switch off certain appliances within your home, especially those that are using a lot of uh, electricity. And then after three minutes, you then come on again. Uh, if you've not obviously you know, intervened, um, again, <coughs> the, the customer interface you need and your SMS will tell you that you still overpower. So that iteration will happen five times. And if you've not intervened after five iterations, you will then stay off the grid completely. Mm -hmm. But if you have intervened, you've reduced the load out of your stove, your geyser, your underfloor heating, pool pumps, etc. Uh, you're then able to enjoy electricity within your home. What also strikes me about the beauty of this technology that's been uh, rolled out is the fact that uh, you can monitor the use of each household's electricity consumption and also switch it off remotely. I'm not too sure, uh, Executive Mayor, if this has been deployed into other geographic locations uh, outside of Johannesburg, outside of South Africa, where we've seen a positive case study, hence the implementation here in the city of Johannesburg. But what kind of results are we hoping at the end of the day to achieve with load limiting with the buy-in of, of the Johannesburg uh, residents? There are a number of cities throughout the world that are rolling out smart meters for different purposes. Um, from our, our understanding, there's no city that has implemented load li limiting to the extent that we've implemented. So the, in the city, city of, of Johannesburg, Johannesburg is the so first? So it's actually yes. first rollout at a massive scale. There are cities that intervene in the form of uh, interfacing with their communities about which appliances consume more electricity, how do you engage with your appliances. Smart meters can be used for many different purposes. What we've done is to adapt them to a particular purpose that would want to use it for in Johannesburg right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is that consumers would progressively be able to enjoy other benefits of having a smart meter. And this could include among status uh, linkages into your appliances. So on the basis of a smart meter, you could know which of your appliances consume how much energy and if appliances are using extra ed energy that they would require some intervention from a maintenance or replacement point of view. So smart meters are deployed for different purposes. I mean, I, I've seen in certain instances where people instruct their microwave to heat up the food uh, when they are getting home. A life yeah. of luxury, clearly. <laughs> 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 but as I'm saying, I mean, people are using this for different purposes. We intervened in the first instance to improve the metering environment to have uh, on-time, immediate metering information with the customer. Mm -hmm. And then we said the most immediate intervention that we need to introduce is about mitigating load shedding. But going forward, we would be able to use smart metering for other purposes, both to the benefit of the city and also to the benefit of the consumer. So clearly we're advancing into a more technological city, a smart hub potentially uh, for a city of the future. But obviously you cannot do this alone. And Mr. Kulu, maybe you can also give us uh, 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 some recommendations and maybe even your review of the process so far, because you need the buy-in of the Johannesburg resident who's actually willing and able to assist the city of Johannesburg with regard to the deployment of these smart meters and uh, adding their, their part into uh, load limiting. Certainly, I think uh, we've learned our lessons in terms of the rollout. I mean, obviously, we're looking at about 250,000 meters that needs to be rolled out. And you can imagine trying to get access into people's homes. Mm. I mean, go to Houghton, for instance, high walls and high security, trying to get access there. So there, there are a lot of issues, I think, that we've basically learned through that process. So what we've then done now is that we'll actually look at the load shedding block. So meaning that uh, we've organized suburbs into particular blocks. So when you go there and actually try and install the meters, we're then able to get proper communication, for instance, uh, to be done within that particular block. So meaning that we get the community involved. We've started in Vonavelle. I was personally there myself to engage with the Vonavelle community. I mean, you look on Twitter, for instance, they're actually grateful that that's an approach that we've taken. So now we're saying that let's get the Vonavelle community um, uh, as part of the block to be all on smart meters, and therefore we're in a position to be able to implement the lot limiting. So that, it, that means that there will be complete out of load shedding. Mm. 
So every time ESCOM calls for load shading within the Vona Valley, we'll just do load limiting. And therefore, they can then move to uh, also uh, time of use tariff, et cetera, et cetera, like the mayor was saying, that there are other benefits, I mean, that uh, results from the, the smart metering. You've also deployed this out into other suburban areas across the city of Johannesburg, but we know that there are problem areas, so to speak, where consumers are still very uh, defensive and are pushing back against even paying some of the electricity tariffs, like we recently saw with the residents of Orlando. How do we address this particular issue where some consumers have actually come back, uh, Mr. Kulu, to say that load limiting actually damages some of the electrical supplies? Uh, this mindset change, do we need to uh, implement uh, a different strategy when it comes to communicating with the Joburg city residents, uh, Mr. Mayor? Well, it's about engaging. As we said, this is the first that, uh, program like this is being rolled out and we need to interface with our communities about the best ways to implement it. The fact that we increase the, the period from 30 seconds to three minutes mm. gives pe people greater opportunity to be able to intervene. Uh, so we have to work with communities to find the solutions. We can't sit back and say, well, let's just live with load shedding. We, we have to look at innovative solutions to solve the problem, and this is one of the innovative solutions we've looked at. In instances where there are teething pro problems, let's together work on resolving those problems and not sit back and say, well, let's not do anything. Mm. Uh, the reality is, uh, in the first few months that we implemented, people complained that they are not getting their SMSs, so we needed to improve the quality of data from an SMS point of view. Mm. People said, well, you know, there's a surge that comes into my home when you switch on and off uh, in, in the periods that you switch on and off. So I'd rather be load shed completely. But we found that uh, the resistance was with the initial implementation as people get to understand how the system works and are able to manage the system themselves, they're quite happy. They would know which instruments they need to target and they would have an interface with whoever is at home to say, well, if the requirement is to reduce the load by this much, this is what we need to switch off. And it's actually an easy process. You just go yourself, switch off the swimming pool, switch off a geyser. You might not need it during the day. You might need it uh, rather late in the evening. And, and you have those choices that you can make. Mm -hmm. And on the basis of those choices, you don't have to be affected. The idea is to get to a point where people are not affected at all on the basis that it's a f simple system. You get the information, you intervene. Mr. Mayor, are you saying that maybe the city of Johannesburg will never be load shed due to this active citizenry uh, uh, participation with regard to monitoring electricity use? It, it's possible. I mean, we, by the time we get to 250 meters, uh, the amount of energy that we'd be able to save through load limiting is actually significant. But load limiting is one of the interventions. We've also got ripple control relays, particularly in your higher density units, your townhouse complexes, your flats, where we're able to switch off the geysers. So you're able to reduce the load on the geysers remotely mm. from the city power offices. And they are able to then reduce the amount of energy. In fact, we've been using ripple controls. Currently, it gets us about 60 to 80, uh, 60 to 80, 80 megawatts, megawatts yeah. uh, of electricity that we're able to intervene off-site. Most of the time, you don't feel moment, it. That's 60 to 80 megawatts. How many households can that actually light up? So you're looking at about uh, sub of about 700 houses or so. Sure. But just Quite to also give comfort and to add to what the mayor said, I mean, if you look at the load shedding incidents that we've had, it's about 220. We actually keep stock every time us, ESCOM asks okay. us to, to, to load shed. 220 incidents, and then out of, out of that, we've mitigated 179 based on the, obviously, the leadership of the executive mayor and the interventions that we've put in place. So, so therefore, it's, it's, it's working, and I think it's a principle that we can be able to expand to other, I mean, initiatives as well. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll certainly get into that uh, right after the short ad break, making our way to uh, leading the city of Johannesburg into being a world-class, potentially no longer load shed city in the future. We'll continue with this discussion on load limiting and the effect on load shedding shortly on the city of Johannesburg with my guests in studio, the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, Johannesburg Park Stau, as well as the managing director of City Power, Sitelo Kulu. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. We continue our discussion on load limiting. I'm joined by my two guests in studio, Park Stau, the Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, and Sitelo Kulu, MD of City Power. Now, just before the ad break, we were actually talking about the results that we've seen so far with regard to the brief implementation of load limiting. I understand that we are looking to roll out, I think, 250,000 more uh, smart meters. But, Mr. Kulu, if we've seen such positive results in the short term where we're able to save enough electricity to supply another 70 households with electricity in the long term when we see more Johannesburg residents and households taking up these smart meters uh, what would the positive outcome be uh, could we potentially constantly see the lights on in the city of Johannesburg I think certainly if you look at the numbers that we've looked at for instance we've actually done an assessment we've looked at the average consumption per household uh, during you know the peak hours and also during the day and the numbers that we're coming up to is about 800 megawatts that you can be able to basically get from only the domestic customers and only uh, you know the load limiting so so I think that's very significant uh, mm -hmm. because if you look at the load shedding requirements I mean now stage one stage two and stage three it goes up to about 800 megawatts so meaning that we can just eradicate stage one, stage two, and stage three if we were to get all the citizens within the, you know, Johannesburg having smart meter participating in load limiting. And that's what it means. But I think the most important point, and then the mayor that always talks about, it's about saying that we will only be limiting load within the residential homes, not businesses, because yeah. that drives the economy within the city of Johannesburg. So you can then imagine the spin-offs there where we're saying that we're not going to load shed, but we'll be able to just load limit the residential customers and therefore uh, be able to give uh, a business a break in, in terms of lo load shedding. I'm happy you touched on business because uh, for the majority of our conversation, we've really focused on households and the average consumer. But small and medium enterprises have certainly been earmarked to drive the economic growth cycle, not only in South Africa, but also in the city of Johannesburg. We have Vulin Lelechozi as well, which is an initiative uh, that of the city of Johannesburg to help encourage entrepreneurship as well as small business owners. How will they be impacted by load limiting? Is it short-term pain for long-term gain uh, for these entrepreneurs to get their ducks in a row, manage the electricity supply, in order to return to, prof to profitability and maintain it as such in the long term. Mr. Mayor? Well, it certainly is. We also had discussions with uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Johannesburg in as much as we had discussions with the South African Property Owners Association to say how do we get business to assist in a way that uh, does not uh, require load sharing. So how do we get a partnership between the city and business that enables us to keep the lights on and to keep business going? And these are tar targeted programs. There are some innovative programs that we're talking about with business. Some of them relate to whether we can have variable hours that they trade. There are shopping centers that say, actually, we don't have customers early in the morning, mm. so we can pretty much shift our peak to a different peak and others are saying well we actually need people so it has to be almost enterprise by enterprise mm -hmm. entering into a partnership and a relationship that says how can we engage and mitigate the problem we're quite excited that business has come to the party and said we're prepared to contribute and i'm looking forward to a situation where jointly with business would be able to make announcements of what we would be able to do to, does big business also have a part to play here, Mr. Kuhn? Yeah, no, certainly. I think if you look at the implementation point of view, obviously we're developing a lot of jobs in that environment and also SMMEs. Uh, but also I've been told the mayor this, we're currently testing an app uh, and this app basically talks to a smart meter and a smart meter you, can, you will then be able to switch off your load anywhere you are in the world, for instance. But what we're doing is that we're stimulating a manufacturing uh, process uh, in terms of uh, you know, making sure that we turn the current homes into smart homes, because that's basically what we're trying to do. So a smart mm -hmm. meter, not about load limiting only, but also enable it through you know, uh, your, your smartphone, for instance, like through the apps, and therefore be able to participate with the SMMEs so that they can participate in terms of making homes smart homes, because that process is beyond the meter. It's not really our responsibility, but by doing what we're doing, we're enabling that environment, and that will create a lot of jobs in terms of the, the SMMEs. Are there actual figures that we can put to the, the job growth and the development of these SMMEs, uh, Mr. Mayor? Well, at this point, not, because we would have to look at what uh, the impact of load shedding has been on business uh, and the extent to which there is uh, uh, 
stifled growth in the economy of the city and the country. And our approach is that we need to be able to overcome that problem. But there are problems beyond the energy issues that we need to address, and these have to do with structural problems in our economy, as much as they have to do with building a cadre of entrepreneurs in our country that's able to take advantage of the opportunities. We're working with uh, a number of uh, partners, including the University of Johannesburg and Wirtz University. With Wirtz University, we're working on different apps and uh, uh, ICT related products that we can incubate that enable us to take advantage of these new opportunities. In as much as with the University of Johannesburg, we're working through Resolution Circle and the establishment of a new green economy uh, chair at the university that we're sponsoring mm -hmm. to create new industries that uh, take advantage of the conversion into alternative energy, so to say. So we also need to be cognizant of the reality that when we're talking energy as an example, the economy is in transition. We've, we're a coal generating country, mm -hmm. but we also have to make a, a transition into alternative energies. But we can't import all these energy sources. We need to be able to produce some of these ourselves. And that's the partnership that we've built with the University of Johannesburg so that we can incubate these enterprises and enable growth and development of this. Is it ever possible, having uh, said what you mentioned, uh, uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, that uh, the city of Johannesburg could also potentially move off the grid completely or have alternative sources of energy? Is that uh, potentially something that we're looking at, despite Unit 6 recently also uh, being uh, brought online now at the Madubi Power Station? I think what we've actually done the numbers. If you look at the size of Johannesburg and you look at the projections in terms of the capacity that we need, we're likely to grow over the next 10 years to about 5.4 gigawatt hours, so, so sort of gigawatts. So, so therefore, it's highly unlikely likely that we can be totally off grid. But I think what we're fighting for is to come up with an optimal mix, meaning that we need to have a mix in terms of renewables, uh, we need to have a mix in terms of the fossil fuel, for instance, and if there's also um, uh, uh, hydro, like for instance, we're looking at the in-pap turbines now, for instance, so that gives you an optimal mix. And I think the context that we're trying to create is that once you have a renewable and a mix in terms of your base load and your picking, etc., smart meter becomes very important because at some, at some point you're not going to have the sun or there will be no wind, for mm. instance, so therefore you need to have flexible load. So the load limiting uh, therefore, from the sustainability point of view, it's not about just only load limiting for load shading, but it's also about making sure that you've got optimal mix, therefore you've got flexibility in terms of managing your load. So therefore, we're not going to be completely off-grid, but we'll come up with an optimal mix that is aligned to the RP 2010 from the national point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping with that theme, Mr. Kohl, you've also recently attended the Africa Utility Industry Awards, where not only did uh, you also pick up an award on behalf of City Power, but you also engaged with a lot of our peers and counterparts on the rest of the African continent who also deal with power generation as well as electricity capacity. Are there lessons maybe that we can learn from our peers on the rest of the continent that we can potentially deploy here in order to alleviate our electricity crisis? Well, certainly, I think I was lucky really to be part of the, the CEOs forum uh, where I get to, got to meet, uh, you know, uh, CEOs from other countries like Nigeria, for instance, Ghana, etc., etc. And that type of engagement was obviously um, uh, assisting in terms of the cross-pollination on some of the lessons that uh, we can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I must say that they appreciated the work that we're doing as a city of Johannesburg, but also equally so uh, in, in, in Africa, they've been looking at uh, you know the, the power pools where they're able to connect you know from one country to the other and I think these are some of the things that we're looking at as well so from that perspective we're able to learn as well as to say how best we can do that but also uh, part of the discussion we had was to say it's no more about just making sure that the supply side is strengthened but we need to make, make sure that we come up with a distributed generation meaning that it's not about just wheeling power from one country to the other but let's promote distributed generation, let's engage our customers at that particular level for them to be able to participate in generation into the grid. So those are some of the critical discussions that we thought that uh, they actually, you know, become a synergy in terms of what other countries are doing and what we're doing as well. Mm -hmm. But based on the studies that we've done, I think recently, we are actually ahead of the pack in terms of the work that we're doing. So, so there's potentially uh, the lead for the city of Johannesburg to take the lead here and also help uh, the, the other cities across the rest of the continent as well to pick them up when it comes to the city, uh, the electricity supply. Certainly, I think those were some of the discussions and uh, we've done an independent maturity assessment study where it basically compares us with the, the other countries, not only you know, within the continent, but also abroad. And I must say that we, we basically compare very favorably uh, on that study. Executive May, it sounds as though your hands will be full then having to travel across the continent and the globe uh, to uh, be able to exchange some of these skills and the knowledge set that we have uh, gained certainly. But uh, as we wrap up our conversation, uh, I'd like to get your view on how we currently fare with regard to load limiting on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. Uh, and more importantly, 
the end goal, where we'd like to find ourselves uh, being when it comes to uh, the, the official implementation of load limiting and the city of Johannesburg potentially being a uh, uh, lights on city 24 7. I would say we're currently at eight. I would say that there are a number of teething pr problems that we encountered that we've improved on, but there are also instances where the customers believe that we need to be able to improve and we will be working with our customers to ensure that we're able to improve so, so that we can guarantee the people of Johannesburg reliability of supply because that's what's important for us. We need to provide both business and residents reliability of supply as the city of Johannesburg can and keep the economy pumping. And from that point of view, we look at load limiting as one of the interventions. We looked recently at a very exciting technology that's about in-pipe turbines that's using the bulk water pipes as a means of generating electricity. So we could also generate uh, renewable energy from our bulk water pipes, and that could be able to help us fuel the city. So we're really looking at these innovations. We always say in the local government sector, we don't need to to design new things. We can always learn from each other. Mm. If another city is doing it well, uh, we shouldn't be shy to take it from that city and implement it here. Exactly. Making a tomorrow better than it is today, like you said in your State of the City speech, I take it? Certainly tomorrow will be better than today. Indeed. Well, we'll have to leave it there today, Mr. Kulu. I'm sure you'll share with the sentiments of the Executive Mayor. But that does bring us to the end of this discussion. A big thank you once more to my guests, Park Stau, the Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, and Sitelo Kulu, who is the MD of City Power. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you too have learned something with regard to load limiting and how you can be an active participant in reducing the strain of electricity supply in the City of Johannesburg. From myself and the team, it's goodbye for now.